Ang video na to ay handog ni cdkoffers.com. Marami kang mahanap na iba't ibang uri ng software dito. May games, apps, activation codes for Windows 10. Check out our video on CDK Offers in the video description. Mabilis, mura, and syempre legit dito. Madali lang mag-order, search for the software you need, add to cart, check out, daan ka sa payment options nila, wala pa isang minuto, finished. May legit working CDK ka na sa software na pinili mo. Gamitin ang aming promo code para makakuha pa ng extra 20% discount sa purchase mo. Kung naghanap ka ng mura, legit, and original software, check out cdkoffers.com. I have sported two monitors for over 12 years now, and there is no way I can ever go back to a single monitor. It isn't because it looks cool. It's more than that. Two monitors has given me more of my life back. I can finish things I need to do, not just quicker, but more effectively. With that said, does that therefore mean that three monitors are better than two? And is it better for gaming? I'm Rafael from Hardware Sugar, and Asus just lent us three ROG PG25 9Q and R 360Hz monitors to allow us to test that hypothesis. After seven weeks of use, here are the top five things to know before getting three monitors and what monitors are best for you. Number one, do you have the proper table? As Anton and I were unboxing and admiring these gaming beasts, our excitement was short-lived with one problem. One of the boxes didn't have a power adapter. While Asus sent us a new one two days later, we didn't want to wait and so I began to install my old 34-inch ultra-wide Samsung monitor and matched it with the two ROG monitors. Instantly, I discovered that if I didn't have this insanely lengthy and sturdy table to begin with, it would have been impossible or even dangerous to have them on it to begin with. In short, you need to have a physical game plan. Are you going to use the accompanying monitor stand? If so, then you need to have a strong and lengthy table. I have talked in the past about how the popular IKEA Linman desk is not the most sturdy of desks, and the middle bend is always a risk. If however you want to get a Linman desk or something like it, then I highly recommend placing a support pillar underneath it in the middle. My desk is inspired by the Linman, but instead of being made out of particle board wood scrap, the tabletop is 3.5 inches of pure mahogany, and after close to a year, I don't see any bending whatsoever. In fact, I feel so confident at its strength that I even sit on top of it occasionally when I want to reach for something behind my monitor. If you are in the market for a new table, then consider getting a table with a cable management built in and a table with a thick width in case you want to add a VESA amount grommet. If it is too thin, the mount won't have the support it needs to be mounted. Another option is to just keep the table as it is and mount the monitor to the wall. Take note that not all monitors are VESA compatible, like my old Samsung, so that should be something you should research on in advance. Even if you don't intend to mount the monitor at present, I still highly recommend you get one that has a VESA amount for future proofing purposes. Gaming can be weird. Each of the monitors are non-curved and are 24 inches wide. Multiplying that by 3, that makes the combined screen surface area to be 72 inches. This is a lot of screen space, but does more space mean better game immersion? If you've watched other YouTubers and looked at Instagram shots of users claiming that the best gaming setup involves three or more monitors put together, I warn you that I think that this is overhyped and unnecessarily expensive. Playing COD and Battlefield with three monitors, even if they are the same refresh rate, is amazing to look at if you are looking at it from afar. However, to actually game like this is impractical and nauseating. I'm 32 and have been a gamer all my life, but more than 15 minutes playing like this on COD and I wanted to throw up. The minimap is on one end of the screen and the ammo counter is on the other end. I felt like I was piloting a plane more than I was playing Commando. The bezels also take me out of the experience as it is difficult to align the monitors to the exact same height. You would be much better off with a single ultra-wide monitor like the curved Samsung 49-inch CHG90 as opposed to several smaller monitors. 
Where it does shine, however, is Microsoft Flight Simulator. Flying with these monitors really almost feel like the real thing. This is because this game isn't about fast reflexes. Of course, you could make it that kind of game, However, instead, Flight Simulator is all about the views. If you haven't read up on the game yet, the highlight is that you fly from any point to any point in the world, and the game is able to render an accurate presentation of anywhere you are. Looking out at the BGC complex while flying over EDSA, just before flying back to Glorieta Mall and other landmarks, is immensely gratifying. And the three monitors really gives me the sensation of being on a plane again without the fear of getting COVID in the process. I haven't tried it out with racing simulators for this simple reason that racing games don't interest me. And while having three expensive gaming monitors run flight simulator is fantastic, it hardly justifies the cost, especially since flight sim is sort of a class all on its own, and what I mostly play are FPS, third-person adventure games, and RTS games. Are you okay with different frame rates? All three ROG monitors are identical with a high refresh rate of 360Hz, and so simple things like moving your cursor to the left and right all feel like it's just one massive monitor. However, ordinary people like myself just like buying a new monitor to supplement their current ones. In my case, my newest monitor is the MSI Optics Mag 3220CQR, which I use for gaming. Originally, it was my 60Hz Samsung Ultrawide. That one, however, has been relegated to being my secondary monitor. I talked about this a little bit in my other video. In short, a lot of people don't buy three or two monitors in one go, and so when they pair up a monitor with a lower refresh rate with monitors which have higher refresh rate, you will notice a difference in speed instantly the moment you move your cursor and it can be irritating. There are two ways a monitor connects to your PC's graphics card, either through the display port which is what you should always use as much as possible, or through the HDMI cable. The display port will always give you faster refresh rate, so even if you have the same model of monitors, the one plugged in through a display port will always be faster than that of the one plugged in through an HDMI cable. If you are a light gamer or not a gamer at all, I believe that 60Hz is perfectly acceptable and you should get monitors with the same refresh rate so that it is less disorienting when you move your cursor from different monitors. However, if you are like me and you want to be a little competitive when you game, I have grown used to having a 165 frame rate monitor as my main and a 60Hz ultrawide as my secondary in spite of the annoying feeling of being throttled down every time I switch between monitors. Perfect for multitasking. Having three monitors allows me to spend less time doing the things I'm not passionate about but which needs to be done and more time on things that I do care about. A lot of which are things that don't involve my computer. For live broadcasts like our regular Pwede Magtanong show, one monitor has OBS on, the other on Discord, and the other monitor I use to check YouTube and Facebook just to make sure that the feed is showing up as it should. I honestly cannot imagine doing this with just a single monitor, even an ultra-wide. Paying bills every month is a pain, but it is important to always be well organized. I pay the bills for the whole family, so that means everyone's cell phone accounts, the Meralco, water, internet, and so forth. In short, I pay more than 50 to 20 different kinds of bills a month, and I have a master spreadsheet which I update the moment I pay a bill. So, one monitor carries the master spreadsheet, while the other is an online banking browser which allows me to pay the bill itself. The third monitor is my Viber and WhatsApp window. I like sending the family updates about the changes in their respective electric bills the moment I encode. For stock trading, I have one monitor showing the historical trades of the company I'm studying, another monitor is an Excel sheet of companies I'm interested in studying, and the prices I want to sell or buy at. And the other monitor is usually my Bloomberg account which shows all the current stocks I own and their current value. This beats having to minimize windows over and over. The software is easy but tedious. Setting up the software for the monitor layout is easier than it looks. To be honest, what discouraged me from experimenting with more monitors in the past is because I was concerned it was going to be complicated to install. The truth is that it is easy to do, but it can be annoying because of how often you sometimes need to make adjustments. There are two ways on how to use a multiple monitor setup. The first is the surround spanning option, which makes all the monitors turn into just a single ultra-wide monitor. In this mode, Windows will just assume you have just one massive monitor regardless of the bezels. 
So when you open up programs, it will fill up the entire screen. This is the mode you want if you want to have the ultra immersive gaming experience. This, however, is not practical for simple things like Microsoft Office, surfing the web, and even video editing. For video editing, for instance, I have to resize DaVinci Resolve each time, and even that with the resize, some parts of it gets cut. In summary, I have to go to NVIDIA Control Panel because I use an RTX card, turn on surround, make sure the monitors are properly aligned, which sometimes they aren't, and I have to guess which monitor is which because unlike the Windows program, there is no option to identify which is which. After that, there is the occasional problem of Windows lowering the refresh rate for some or all of the monitors, and I need to manually reset the frames to their maximum. Can you imagine doing this every time you want to play a game for just an hour and do it all over again afterwards when you're done? It's maddening! As cool as it looks to game with all three, most of the gaming experience is just cool to look at but not fun. Unless of course you are playing something like Microsoft Flight Simulator or a racing game. For all other gaming genres though, I really wouldn't recommend it. The second method is to make each monitor a separate window from the others. Instead of a program filling up the screen of all three monitors, it fills up the screen of just one monitor of your choosing. This is the setup I prefer because it makes me an effective worker. To set this up, you don't even need to use the NVIDIA control panel. You just right click in Windows, select display settings, select identify, and rearrange the monitors as you see fit. You can arrange the monitors based on how they are physically installed. Like if you want one monitor to be in portrait and the other two in landscape, just select it so. If you want a monitor above another monitor, just drag and drop. In conclusion, we always recommend a multiple monitor setup because it gives you your time back to focus on things that you care about. Gaming on multiple monitors, however, is expensive and sometimes impractical because it requires several high refresh rate gaming monitors which aren't usually cheap, a very powerful graphics card, and it also forces you to alter settings each time. In short, if you are work from home and still use a single monitor, please consider adding more monitors to allow you to do your work faster and better. If you're looking for the best gaming experience, I recommend investing in a single gaming monitor with a high enough refresh rate and a screen resolution you can afford and thereafter use your old monitors as productivity monitors. Stay tuned for our review of the ROG PG259QNR and more ergonomic chairs in the near future. And you want to give a special shout out to our top fans. Dom H, Liam Magnae, Ian Meru, Richard Onkinko, ITX Addict, John Ochia, and Christian Espinosa. Again, thank you so much for all your support and for tuning in to our live stream. I see a lot of you. Till next time, guys.